Hi there, this is Harry and welcome back to Advanced English Lessons with Harry where I try to help you to get a better understanding of the English language, improve your conversational skills, improve your business English, whatever it takes, we're here to help you. So back to our lesson. So the lesson today is about accidents and incidents in the traffic driving a car. So different accidents and incidents that can take place. So these are advanced expressions that you need to know. So if you're a stranger in a foreign land and something happens, you'd like to know what these words mean and how you describe the particular situation. So accidents and incidents, advanced vocabulary relating to those accidents and incidents in traffic and in cars. As always, we have 10 particular expressions to give you and phrases. So I'll go through them in the list and then I'll go back and give you some examples and then you can practice them on your own. So number one, to collide. Well, collide is when usually two cars crash into something, okay, or into each other, or a bus and a car, or the tram and the car, or the truck and the car, or even the bicycle and the car. So they collide, it means they crash into something. So you might see the report or hear the report on the news. There was a big holdup in the city centre today because a truck collided with the tram. So the driver of the truck thought he could get to the red light ahead of the tram, but unfortunately not, and they collided. So when they collided, they crashed into each other and they held up traffic for many, many hours. He collided into the post beside the roadworks because he didn't see the sign to slow down. So the motorist wasn't injured, but his car was damaged because he collided with the post, the lamp post or the signal post or the traffic lights. He collided with it. And so he had an accident. Okay. So we often hear things like colliding head on, colliding with oncoming traffic. For example, if the dog ran across the road and he tried to avoid the dog but collided to an oncoming bus or an oncoming truck, there would be a lot of damage and perhaps some injured people. Hopefully not. To skid. Well, the car will skid when it's on a wet surface or the bus will skid or the bicycle will skid. So when you try to apply the brakes or pull the brakes or put your foot on the brakes, nothing happens and the car skids. So we're often given warnings in the winter time in particular, be careful there is ice or black ice and you might skid or you might have a skid. So the car skidded on the black ice and hit the wall, okay? The man came around the corner a little too fast and his car skidded in a pool of water and he lost control. So when we skid, the water or the surface of the road doesn't grip with the rubber on our tires and we lose control very, very quickly. Okay. So if you're driving too fast and you hit a patch of black ice, you can go into a skid. Or if you're driving around the corner and there's a pool of water, then you, the car can skid, the bus can skid, the truck can skid, okay? To swerve, well, when we swerve, we do that to try and avoid a particular accident, okay? He swerved to avoid the dog on the road. So my little example before, so the dog runs out on the road or the cat runs across the road and you see it a little bit too late, you swerve, you, you drive either to the left very quickly or to the right very quickly to try and avoid that particular person, the child, the dog or the cat, to swerve. Or somebody pulled out from a side road and you saw them a little bit late, you swerved to avoid having an accident. So you went over on the other side of the road very, very quickly. So your hand action was very quick and the car, you don't lose control of the car, but you have to move very quickly left or right. So the difference between skidding and swerving is usually when you skid, you lose control of the car and then you have to try and gain control. But when you swerve, you have to drive very quickly left or right to avoid having a particular accident. To hit the car head on, well, when you hit the car head on, it means you crash right into the front of the other car. So you had no option but to 
hit the car head on because if you had swerved, you would have had another bigger accident. You might have hit the people. So you had no choice but to hit the car head on. Or if one car coming towards you is driving on the wrong side of the road, which can happen sometimes if they are strangers to that particular country, they may have forgotten which side of the road they should drive on and they hit the car head on really, really bad. That happened to me many, 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 many years ago when it was a wet evening and a car skidded and came across onto my side of the road and hit me head on. Yeah, so I had no way of avoiding him. And luckily, well, I'm here today. Yeah, so luckily I am. But it was a really nasty accident at the time. So when somebody hits somebody else head on, they don't hit them on the side, they hit them front to front. So like this head on. Okay. I'd just like to ask you if you do like this particular lesson, then please like the video. And as always, if you can subscribe to the channel, it really, really helps. To jackknife. Well, jackknife is this expression we use to describe particularly trucks. And when trucks are driving along the road, as you know, they often can drive really, really quickly. But if they have a problem on ice, then the brakes lock. And what happens is the weight of the truck from behind brings it forward and the truck ends up in a V shape. So instead of along like this, it ends up in a V shape like this. So we call it to jackknife. So the back of the car, the truck comes forward and blocks the other side of the road. So you have the whole road, the left side and the right side completely blocked because the, the truck or the van or the articulated lorry has jackknifed. So we can read the report that says, oh, terrible delay in the city today. Truck hit some black ice, the brakes locked or jammed, and the truck jackknifed on the road, blocking both lanes, the lane in and out of the city. So the jackknife is when that weight from the back of the truck, uh, when you press the brakes, moves forward and the, the car, the truck goes into like a V shape and there you get this jackknife eff effect. To overshoot. Often when we use overshoot, we talk about aeroplanes so they can overshoot the runway. So they land on the runway, but they don't apply the brakes quick enough or perhaps there is ice or water on the runway and the brakes don't work properly. So the plane overshoots, so comes off the runway. And if it's lucky, it'll land in some grass. If it's not so lucky, it might land in a pool of water or a lake or something worse. Okay, so to overshoot. But you can also, when you're driving your car, you might overshoot the corner, meaning you take the corner a little bit too fast. And when you get to the corner, you're not able to control the car as well. And perhaps you run out of road to overshoot. So overshoot the corner, overshoot the bend, causing some accident. Simply to crash into something. Well, it's a, an ex example and an ex explanation we hear all the time. Ah, oh, I crashed into something last night and damaged my car. I crashed into the tree. I crashed into the gatepost. I did it myself many years ago. I crashed into my gatepost outside my, my house when somebody had parked a little bit closer than I thought. I tried to turn the corner a little bit too sharply, I crashed into the gatepost and did a lot of damage to the rear door of my car. So when we crash into something, we hit it either on the side or head on. He crashed into a tree. He crashed into a lamppost. He crashed into another car. So everything is all about hitting something else, crashing into something and hopefully not into somebody. Damage can all, always be repaired, crash into something. So the next expression is to write off. And if any of you have had this particular problem, then you have my sympathies. To write off the car is not a, next, a nice experience. So if somebody's driving too fast or they take the bend too fast and they crash into the wall, they're going to cause a lot of damage to the wall, to the car, hopefully not to themselves. Or if there's a big pile up, Often you hear that a number of cars were written off because of the impact of the, the accident. So you phone your friend and he says, where were you? I was expecting you to call me last night. Oh, you won't believe it. I had a bad traffic accident. 
Oh my God, are you okay? Yeah, but I wrote the car off or the car has been written off. It's a complete shambles. Hopefully you're okay and there's no damage to you. So to write off means to completely destroy or uh, have the, an impact on the car that is so bad that nothing can be salvaged. Everything has been damaged. The chassis or the engine, the axles, the suspension, everything has been destroyed. So to write off your car. Now, to shatter is another expression we have when we're talking about traffic incidents and accidents. So if a stone hits your window, the window might shatter, meaning it will break into many small pieces. If you drive along and a stone is thrown up by the car in front of you, and if it hits the windscreen in the wrong spot, then the whole glass will come in on you and the windscreen will shatter. The modern windows are a little bit better. They just crack and they don't completely break, but you do have to get them repaired or at worst, you have to get them replaced. So when something shatters, it breaks into a thousand little pieces or it feels like a thousand little pieces and you spend forever cleaning it up from the car, hoovering these little pieces of glass. So a stone or a brick, so some bad guys, some thugs were standing on one of these overpasses on the road and they dropped a brick onto a car traveling along the road and the windscreen shattered. Okay, so to shatter means to break into a thousand pieces. And then finally, we've got to run someone over or to run something over. Well, again, not a nice experience, particularly if it's a, a dog or a cat or some other wild animal. You're driving through the park late at night and you see something running in front of you. You jam on the brakes, but it's too late and you get that terrible sound of bump, bump, that you've run over something in the park. And when you stop the car, it could be a rabbit or a fox or something like that, okay? Now, hopefully you never have to run over somebody, but you do hear about these unfortunate accidents and you'll see it in the, the newspapers or on the internet and the social media. A young boy was run over by a car late on Saturday evening. A young child ran out on the road and was run over by a passing bus. So all of these unfortunate accidents happen. So we use the expression to run somebody over or to run something over. So if you are the person in the car or the bus, you run over that person, that child or that animal. But if you happen to be the person on the road, then you get run over by the car or run over by the bus or run over by the truck. Okay, so these are all of these expressions and words connected with traffic incidents or accidents and they're at a high level, an advanced level, so try to practice and try to understand them. Let me give them to you one more time. To collide with something, to skid on something, like skid on a slippery surface, to swerve across the road to avoid oncoming traffic, to hit the car head on, it was unavoidable to hit it head on. To jackknife a truck or a juggernaut jackknifes when it puts on its brakes, and not able to stop the truck in time, it jackknifes. To overshoot as a plane, to overshoot the runway or to overshoot the bend in the road that you missed. To crash into something, crash into the lamppost, crash into the tree. To write off the car, yeah, it's a goner, it's written off, to write off to shatter, the windscreen shattered when the brick hit it full on, to shatter into a thousand small pieces. And then finally, to run someone or something over. Okay, as I said, all advanced English words and expressions connected with those traffic incidents or accidents. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you understand them. And I hope you can practice them. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. This is Harry saying goodbye. Join me again for the next lesson.